My name is Grant Gibbs. I reside in, in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, I come out of the IT sector, information technology sector, but discovered the Hippo Rota somewhere along the way about 25 years ago and got involved on a ca as a casual distributor and then eventually took over the product from the creators of the Hippo Rota. Uh, they are Johan Jonker and Petty Petzer. Um, and we got involved in distributing hippo rollers primarily out of a humanitarian interest. Um, it's com a complete shift from high tech to low tech, um, but essentially hippo roller is very much an appropriate technology. Thank you. Would you please elaborate on the hippo water roller and what you do exactly? All right, the hippo water roller is essentially a tool to assist rural communities or any community that doesn't have a reliable water infrastructure. So currently uh, these types of communities are forced to collect water from long distances. Um, they have smaller containers, they are 5 gallon or 20 litre containers, which they will then fill with water and, and have to carry that heavy weight over quite a long distance back to their homes. So, the hippo roller allows someone to carry five times that amount of water in one go. So the drum carries holds 90 liters, but it has a clip-on steel handle. Perhaps I can just demonstrate very quickly with a, a miniature version. Um, you can see this, but this is just a mini version of, of the hippo roller. But it has a clip-on handle, which allows you to clip on and off. You can have a very large opening to fill the drum. Once it's filled, they simply place the roller on its side, clip on the handle, and they will then roll it back to their homes. So the weight is actually born on the ground. It's not something they need to carry above the ground. Um, the design of the roller is extremely simple, and I think that's been its success. It's, it's in fact, 25 years old already. Uh, it was invented, or not invented, it was created in 1991. So. The material, well, let's just say there are three components that make up the hippo roller. We have a, a steel handle that I spoke about, which just needs enough pressure to grip. It does have um, special bushes, call it a wheel bearing for want of a better word, which protects the, steel, the plastic drum from the steel handle. Um, it then has a large drum, which is 90 liters, and it's manufactured in one solid piece. Reason being is that um, to minimize potential cracks. So if we make it in two or three parts, it, it's more likely to crack. So this, this takes an hour to produce one drum. It has a very, very large opening, um, which is big enough to allow the user to put their arm inside. In fact, I have a sample drum behind me. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, I don't know if that helps a little. But this is the size of the actual cap. So you can see it has a very large opening to fit them on the side of the drum to be able to wash and clean. Because the big problem with the smaller containers is they have small openings and they're very difficult to keep clean and, and uh, minimize hygiene issues. So those are the three components that make up the hippo roller. Um, we find that we get about a five to seven year lifespan on average. Um, from the hippo roller in tough rural conditions. Um, what actually happens is when the roller rolls along the gravel roads, small um, sand particles actually get embedded in the rolling surface. So it changes color fairly quickly to, to whatever the, the environment looks like, but that adds a layer of protection because you now have sand rolling on sand. Um, I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Um, you see the drum also has uh, very rounded edges. The reason being is that when it's um, full, it's an extremely heavy weight. 90 liters is 90 kilograms. But because it has a rounded edge, you can roll it into the upright position. So it's a lot easier for the elderly and the young children to manage that. Um, and of course, then the drum has a stable base so that when it is standing upright, um, it's, it's okay. It won't fall over very easily. The other important thing about the large opening is that small toddlers can't fall in and drown. It's small enough that babies can't fall through the opening. And that tends to be one of the problems that they have with open buckets. Okay. okay. Um, so the, have the simplicity of the design is exceptional, but yet it's extremely efficient. How was it invented? 
Um, well, Petty Pizza and Johan Jonker actually grew up in South Africa. Um, they were living on farms. Uh, their parents were farmers. And they saw the problem. They, they witnessed women walking for kilometers every day just to go and collect water and carry it back. They also noticed that they keep buying up all the used smaller 20 liter jerry can containers um, that had other products inside, other substances inside. And they would then use these containers to carry water. So being engineers, um, later in their years, they realized they tried to develop something that would be more feasible. They felt there's got to be a better way to transport water more easily. And they first tried developing a wheelbarrow with a molded um, tank. The idea being to try and have a low center of gravity so it was a bit easier to manage. Um, when they did the costing, they found that the wheel was the most expensive component. And that's actually when Petty had that eureka moment and said, let's put the water in the wheel. And that's how it came about. And that was back in 1991. And all the materials are locally produced. And how do you achieve the durability of the product? All right, well, as you said correctly, the, the, all the materials are, are sourced locally within South Africa. Um, we use a standard polyethylene, but it has various properties in it to uh, give us a good, a durable product. Um, there's UV protection, there are color pigments. You can see a red drum behind me. We can suit the, the um, drum to suit our sponsors. Um, both the cap and the drum are made from the same material. Um, and then the steel handle is essentially electroplated just to minimize corrosion. Um, what we find is that the oily hands um, help to minimize corrosion as well. Um, the the uh, end caps that fit on the handle are made from polyurethane. Um, in simple terms, they're about 14 times better than steel when we talk about abrasion. It's, what actually happens is that at the water point, the user might take the handle off, put it down in the mud and the sand, then when they pick it up and clip it on, there's now particles of sand on the ends of the handle. So the polyethylene is quite soft plastic, so the sand particles will embed in the plastic here, and it'll try to grind away like sandpaper. It'll try and grind away the urethane, but the urethane just doesn't wear down. So that's one of the great simple ideas that have been added. Um, the drum, obviously, polyethylene has a fairly long molecular structure, so it's quite flexible. But we make it quite thick um, so that it doesn't puncture very easily. You can roll over rocks and glass and barbed wire and all sorts of typical uh, things that you find in rural conditions. The only concern you have is if the roll is full and you let it fall down a, a, a small cliff or something like that or roll away into a solid tree, there's a chance it may crack. It doesn't crack very easily. but if it does, you will then have a problem. Uh, we have also developed a very simple repair kit, um, which is just more polyethylene powder. They would simply clear away the, the um, damaged area and melt the plastic onto that, both from the inside and from the outside, just to give it a steel again. Um, if, the, if the material actually gets a, a full crack, it's unlikely that you can repair that properly. Um, but we, as I say, on average, we're getting about a seven-year lifespan. Uh, quite often, more longer than ten years, we found some used rotors are still being used. So it's really quite, quite well proven in the field. Um, what are the benefits of the product, uh, in addition to the obviously easier water supply? All right, there's a number of benefits um, and a lot of spin-off benefits. So essentially. If you consider the time it takes for somebody to collect water, um, we find that in, on average it's the, the women and the children who suffer the most, as well as the elderly. The elderly struggle to carry heavy containers of water, so even if they do have a wheelbarrow which allows you to transport more, it's extremely difficult on their shoulders and, and hard to, to manage. Um, the hipparola is significantly easy, so on flat level ground, um, the effective weight of, of a hippo roller, even though it's 90 liters, 90 kilograms, the effective weight is just 10 kilograms. So that makes it so much easier. Of course, that gets a lot more difficult when you go uphill or you've got to negotiate obstacles, but the steel handle gives you full control. Um, the roller was designed to be pulled, but we find that most people find it easier to push. So they have a nice, good, straight, upright posture. 
and they can push their roller, but of course when they go uphill, they put the handle over and then pull the roller uphill. And if it's a very steep hill, two people can walk together pulling the same roller. Um, so time is the most obvious benefit that, that um, comes out of that, and that means mothers can spend more time in the home addressing other household tasks. Um, they could possibly even grow vegetable gardens, little home-based food gardens, so that they can be more sustainable. Um, more water means a better quality of life, of course. Hygiene is impacted because you can now uh, have a better health and better hygiene practices. Um, what is quite important to note is that children whose task it is to, first thing in the day, is to go and collect water, are missing a lot of school. So their, their education is negatively impacted. Whereas if you have a HIPAA roller, it's less times that you need to travel, it's quicker to collect the water, and they can now attend school more readily and get a better chance of completing the education. And that all contributes to breaking free of the poverty cycle. Um, and how is it accepted in the rural communities? Um, it's extremely well ex accepted. It's, an, it's such a simple technology to convey and, and, and explain how it works. And that the benefit is realized immediately. It's not one of these projects that you have to pour in uh, you know, so much funding that it takes years to see the, re the return on investment. Um, what we found is that we do need to go through a process of introducing the concept correctly. So what we do is we will meet with the leadership of the community and make sure they understand what it is and understand the principles behind the project and get their mandate to proceed. Once that's happened, they will then themselves meet and decide who the beneficiaries will be. The reason being is that there's generally speaking never enough for every household. So although we prefer one roller per household, um, we find that the community leaders themselves must decide. We can't come out uh, and try and dictate who the beneficiaries will be. But what we've seen in experience is that in most cases, they focus on the elderly, they focus on the child-headed homes, and they focus on those that are furthest away from the water points. Um, so they will then determine who the beneficiaries are. We will then arrange a handover ceremony, um, arrange for the rollers to arrive on that day, and there'll be a lot of song and dance and speeches and thank yous from the community, and we hand them over. It's a great, um, exciting experience. So the sponsor will be present and given an opportunity to, to say something as well and take photographs. And they, in most cases, it'll be used by um, social responsibility programs, and the corporate can then use it as part of the uh, corporate communications. Um. That sounds very nice. Do you have any rewarding experiences? Do you personally get to see how it is used? Or do you hear the stories about it? Uh, yes, I do. I, I've actually traveled to at least 15 countries now. Um, I wish I could be present at every single handover, but it's not always practically or logistically possible. But I have attended many, many uh, handover ceremonies um, where the cubic rollers are handed out. We always request feedback and information, both from the community and from the organizers. Uh, what I did fail to mention earlier is that we typically will partner with a lot of local NGOs. So quite often we don't know the new territories, but a sponsor would like to support a particular territory. So we will identify an NGO that operates in that area and knows the community well, and we'll work in partnership with them terms of doing the handover. Um, ah, there are so many rewarding experiences. It's, it's definitely one of those situations, the more you do this, the longer, you, you know, the more you want to do it. And um, I remember a young girl in South Sudan, and I, I asked her why she liked Pippa Rota so much. And she said to me, straight out, without any hesitation, she said, because now I can look like a city girl. I tried to understand, I asked her, what do you mean, what is a city girl? And she says, well, when I have to carry heavy buckets of water on my head, I can't braid my hair and look attractive for the men. Whereas now <laughs> with the hippo roller, she can do that. And, and um, she's, it was a simple little um, illustration of just how dignity also is affected through simple product like this. It seems that it affects lives of the people in many ways. So yes. the product has been around for around 25 years. Uh, what are the improvements um, compared to the original design? Uh, to be honest, there are very few improvements to the original design. The basic concept is still the same. 
Um, we have improved the, the end caps on the ends of the handles. We've changed the opening of, of the drum and the large cap. We've incorporated um, branding. Um, I can just show an example. Uh, this is just an example of a brand that has been added to the cap and we can do the same on the drum. So can a corporate sponsor's logo can be blended. Can you hold Sorry, it you a bit? Can you lift it a bit? Yeah, now it's visible. Fantastic. Okay, great. So essentially what happens is the, the corporate's logo will get printed in plastic, not in ink. And that plastic image gets sent to us and we transfer that onto the mold one at a time. And the raw material of the cap or the, or the drum melts together with the image and it forms a very durable permanent um, logo. So that's one thing we've done. We've also looked at changing colors to suit corporate sponsors. As I say, here's a, a yellow one. We've done pink ones for, la for Women's Day. We've done all sorts of colors that you can imagine. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of minor refinements here and there. We've added some extra products like, I don't know if you can see this cap. This is essentially what we call a utility cap. So it's the same thing. It, it, works exactly the same, it just has an extra cap in cap. So this particular cap that we use is a standard soda bottle top that is available worldwide. So it's easy to replace if it gets damaged. We do provide some spares with every cap of this, but the idea with this is it allows the user to roll their roller up to the um, small home-based food gardens and simply unscrew the cap and the water will flow out and, and water their plants. So it's a very simple thing. It's also a much more hygienic way of getting water out of the roller rather than putting dirty hands into the roller and contaminating the water. So we educate them to try and rather let the water flow out um, through the small opening and they can simply close it up again when they're finished. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, would you please tell me how you promote the hippo roller since it's targeted to, for local rural communities in Africa? All right, well, first of all, just to say we are not retailing the roller to the general public yet. Um, we do feel that it's, it's the design means that it needs to be quite expensive um, and it's too costly for the end users to afford themselves. So our focus is very much on sponsors and the sponsors range from corporate uh, social responsibility programs, generally speaking, um, then governments, um, a lot of NGOs that use the roller as a tool in their armory to, to be more effective in the community projects that they're trying to do. They might be interested in HIV or something else, but by addressing the water pro problem in that community, they are more effective and have better results with their own programs. Um, and then a lot of individual sponsorships and donations. So we have quite a strong presence in social media our website is quite um, developed so that a lot of people can uh, go online and simply sponsor or order and ask us to ship them to wherever they want them to go. So we, we, we've sent Hippo to at least 29 different countries now um, around the world on behalf of sponsors and donors. And what are your... Sorry? Continue, okay. please. Uh, I wanted to ask about your future plans. Um, <laughs> It's interesting, we've been at this for a long time, as I said, the product has been around for 25 years already. Um, I've personally been involved for 23 years. Um, so it's interesting that only now we're starting to see a real uh, demand um, worldwide for the Hippo in many, many communities. So we're seeing significant potential for scaling up. Um, and what that means is we now need to consider local manufacture in different regions. Um, as you can imagine, the, the full drum, we, we pay a huge premium on shipping costs uh, just to get the roller to. So what we're looking at is doing local manufacture on the ground, um, either using solar rotation molding or existing rotation molders that are in, that have the right equipment and the right uh, quality of equipment and can source the right um, quality of raw material. Be very careful to protect our reputation that we've built over all the years. Um, but that would certainly help us to reach more communities more affordably. Um, we can remove a big chunk of the shipping costs. Um, so that, those are our plans right now, is to expand as much as we can. And if anyone wants to help you in this process, how can people help? 
Uh, we'd really welcome that. Um, as I said, we rely heavily on sponsorships and donations and goodwill of communities. So it could be um, oh, a small church group, it could be a large NGO, it could be a large corporate who sees value in terms of branding the roller with their corporate identity and helping their neighboring communities. I'm thinking of mining groups or farming groups, things like that. Um, they can contact us all through our website, um, hipporoller.org. Very, very simple. Um, like the product and um, let us know how they feel they could get involved and, and we'd love to engage with them and see what we can do together to try and change lives. That's really what we're trying to achieve is change lives through this very, very simple technology. Um, the links will be below the video so anyone who wants to help can go to the links and see what they can do. Um, that would be all the questions we had prepared. Uh, do you have anything to add? Me off guard there. <laughs> no, we'd really just like to say thank you so much um, for helping us spread the word and, and, and just to give people the confidence that this product has been well tried and tested. It's ready to be deployed worldwide. Um, and please contact us and, and we'll love to engage with you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us.